Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. A bustling flight deck of an aircraft carrier is always a dangerous sight, even for veterans. Operating larger and heavier aircraft like E-2C is a task of its own. With that said, an E-2C missing the arresting cables upon landing will trigger a vicious chain of actions. While catapult takeoffs and arrested landings require a high degree of skill and precision, the arrested landing is considered more demanding as the pilot has to maneuver the aircraft against a moving deck. The two new Nimitz-class and Ford-class aircraft carriers, equipped with an improved Fresnel lens optical landing system, have three arresting cables laid across the landing deck. The pilot aligns his approach to the correct glide slope with the help of the Fresnel lens, along with instructions from the landing signal officer. LSO. While all the stringent safety measures were in place, the arrested landing of an E-2C Hawkeye went haywire in 2016 aboard the aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower. Upon landing on the deck, the tail hook latched into the fourth wire. While the aircraft started decelerating along the runway, the cable snapped, releasing the tail hook. Thanks to the years of training and shrewdness of pilots on board, the crew managed to continue the landing roll at full throttle and barely took the Hawkeye back into the sky. Even though the incident was not attributed to the pilot missing the arresting cables, this shows how catastrophic missing the arresting cables could be. The cross-deck pendants, or the arresting cables, are usually made of high tensile steel. Each arresting cable is connected to two purchase cables from the ends that runs to the arresting engine. They transfer the kinetic energy of the aircraft to the arresting engine. Installing a new cable is an intricate task as airmen have to inspect all the sheaves for damages. Upon completion of the installation, the cable is proof-loaded with a test load to confirm the correct operation. Test loads of different weights are used to recreate the impact load of different aircraft weight categories. During the test, the cable is extended to its total runout to identify broken, kinked, or worn marks on the pendants. Despite the exaggerated provisions built into the aircraft carriers, things get interesting when a larger aircraft decides to pay a visit. U-2 Dragon Lady, a one-of-its-kind reconnaissance aircraft, was never meant to operate from an aircraft carrier when it was first designed. 
the shooting down of a U-2 with a surface-to-air missile over the Soviet Union in 1960 questioned the CIA's high-altitude reconnaissance approach using the Dragon Lady. As a result, the CIA, along with the U.S. Air Force, took a strategic move by making the U-2 carrier-capable. Although landing a U-2 on a landing strip requires a chase car driven by a raided pilot and a team of airmen, the CIA made history by safely landing a U-2 on a flight deck. To make the Dragon Lady career capable, Lockheed beefed up its landing gears to withstand the immense stress during catapult launches and arresting hook engagements. Additionally, the plane was retrofitted with an arresting hook and a pair of spoilers in each wing to make the carrier landing possible. The carrier-capable variant was named U-2G and debuted its first landing in March 1964. The bicycle-type landing gear and the wings spanning 105 feet make the launching process demanding. Unlike a usual fighter pilot, a U-2 pilot bears the burden of wearing a bulky pressure suit. The aircraft is equipped with mid-span outrigger wheels, or POGOs, that keep the aircraft laterally balanced during taxi and takeoff. Once on the runway, the pilot advances the throttle, initiating the takeoff run. When the aircraft is airborne, the POGOs will fall out of their sockets in the wing. The mobile chase car acts as the wingman instructing the pilot, looking from behind. The Coke bottle shaped fuselage reduces drag and weight, allowing sustained high altitude operations. To reap the best out of its reconnaissance missions, the U-2 is capable of flying up to an altitude of 70,000 feet. While the aircraft is capable of reaching 60,000 feet in just 45 minutes, the climb rate depends on the nature of the mission. As a typical U-2 mission can last extremely long, even exceeding 12 hours at high altitudes, pilots wear the pressure suit to tackle harsh temperatures and pressures at high altitudes. The pressure altitude of the cockpit at 70,000 feet is maintained at around 28,500 feet which mandates the use of the pressure suit. A dual standard oxygen system provides 100% oxygen supply throughout the mission. Getting the Dragon Lady on her feet is the most challenging phase of the flight. The Pogo team put the outrigger wheels back, allowing the aircraft to be taxied out of the runway.
While every landing of a U-2 is a challenge for the pilots and ground crew, there are rare occasions when an aircraft needs special assistance for landing. In emergencies, where an aircraft is unable to land the usual way, a land-based arresting system is capable of arresting the aircraft. Apart from emergencies, a land-based arresting system allows room for aircraft operations on short and damaged runways. In the event of an aborted takeoff, the aircraft can be arrested using the arresting gear without overshooting the runway. The Barrier Arresting Kit 12, or BAC-12, serves as the standard land-based aircraft arresting system for the U.S. Air Force. BAC-12 is a multiple disc rotary friction type energy absorber that absorbs the kinetic energy of an aircraft until it comes to a complete stop. BAC-12 can be positioned permanently on a runway. Regardless of being positioned on the ground, the arresting system is subjected to the same impact loads as a carrier-based arresting system. With that said, all the land-based engaging devices and energy absorbers undergo a certification process to ensure proper functionality. Airmen adjust the spacing between rubber donuts and take all the other preliminary actions before a certification trial. The main focus during certification is identifying possible wear and damage to the system. Inspections are conducted to determine kinks, cuts, and worn marks on the arresting cables and hydraulic leaks on the energy absorbers. The same Barrier Arresting Kit 12 can be mounted on a moving platform to make a mobile aircraft arresting system. Mass that will come in handy for expedited deployments in non-prepared runways. The mass can take a truck, train, or freighter to reach any global location. The arresting capacity of the mass is on par with the fixed BAC-12 system. Regardless of how well a pilot performs during a mission, a successful landing will conclude the mission with a triumph. That said, it is quite patent how essential it is to stick with the precautions and exact procedures when bringing a multi-million dollar masterpiece with invaluable souls on board. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
See you next time.